Good evening. As the music stopped, I can't tell from in here. Good evening and welcome back to the Cars and Comedy Show here in the Late Night Playset. Hi, Lauren. Hi, everybody at home. My name is Jay Ryan, and we are excited that you are here tonight. We've got a good one. Um, is it Leitner? Latiner? You, you don't even... Latiner. That's why you don't go with it. That's why you don't use it. I don't use it. From Bogey's Garage, Bogey is here. We are so excited. We've been trying to put this together for ages. She doesn't live in town. She stayed in town longer just to do this tonight, so we are very excited. Also, for those people at home who tune in just for one reason. <laughs> Luckily, that reason is here as well. Nicole's here. We've got you on Instagram. Bogey's already in the chair. And we've got Mike up in Canada. Without further ado, I guess it's time to give you Will. Will, take it away, will you? Start us off. Good evening. Welcome back. It is Thursday, March 2nd, 2023. Man, the days and years just keep on clicking. <laughs> Everything our parents and grandparents said was true. It just speeds up. So just speeds Wait, up. Uh, we've got a good one for you tonight. Bogey from Bogey's Garage is here. Luckily, the missus is here. And we are all in a better mood than we were on Tuesday. You ever just kind of yeah. down for no reason? Well, we were just talking about it. Down for not no reason. We've got a shit ton of reasons yeah. for it. Yeah, but yeah, like, it just gets to you. Um, great. Well, welcome. <laughs> Bring this mic over to you. Oh. Wherever you, you can. I'm short. Yeah, no, it, literally, it will go wherever you want it to. There we go. <laughs> can I just dance with it like that? <laughs> We're just going to dance with it. Okay. There we go. And Is that good? Me, I'll just take off here and you, you can host it. Okay. All right. There we go. Sweet. I knew I forgot some stuff before. The conversation was so good. I know. Can I like sidetrack for a hot second? Because you like right at the intro, you did without further ado is what you said. (laughs) And I have been, so I've been going through, I'm in the process of converting my like Instagram live stream thing over to a podcast format. So I've been like going through all the old episodes and I realized that that is my tick is without further ado. The number of episodes where I'm like, without further ado, without further ado, without further ado. So I'm putting together an edit of all of my without further ados, and it's really kind of comical. At least I think it is. Nobody else is going to find it funny, but I think it's funny. There's it's like a super hilarious. cut of, of just that? Yeah, I'm, cool. I'm working on editing that together. because I think Do it's you hysterical. know you're doing it when you do it? I don't. Well, now I do, 
Now, because I've seen it over and over, I did not know that it was a thing. And then I'm watching these. I'm like, oh my God, I say that. And then I went live like the next day. I was like, all right, without further ado, damn it, I just did it. <laughs> we, uh, our advice is for everybody to do a po- especially if you're in a relationship, but anyone, even an individual, is to do a podcast, even if you never send it anywhere. It, okay. Basically, it's Explain forcing me. yourself to record your thoughts and then hear them back. Oh. Because when we first started doing this, the self-awareness thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like a like, mirror. We can do a podcast. We'll be great at our dining room table. We're so interesting. Great. <laughs> Try to communicate those ideas and thoughts out before you have the skills to do it. I know. It's always so interesting, like, what you think is going to be funny. <laughs> in your Like, what's funny to you? And then you put it out there, and you're like, isn't that great? And you're like, oh, crickets. <sighs> crickets. And then the things that I think are boring and awful, everybody's like, oh, God, that was amazing. See, you're right. Comedy's that way. I'm finding that the internet and the virility of of clips and stuff are like that. Yes, and we talk I'm about it a lot. Like that. if you put a lot of effort into it, and you you have this idea, and you craft it, and you produce it, and the whole thing. Yeah, nobody and cares. You put it out. Nobody cares. <laughs> no. And then just a kind of wonky dunk, stupid yeah. thing when you're on your way to your car, and oh, I drop my and keys it, and, and I my think it's Directly an inverse relationship. Like the more effort you put in, the more you care about it, the more you're like, this is really meaningful. <laughs> They're going to really They're relate gonna to this. They're going to so appreciate this heartfelt. Womp, womp, they womp. Don't care. They don't care. No. <laughs> That's the world we live in. So great to commune. <laughs> <laughs> so without further ado. Oh, yeah. Uh, during the credits and all that stuff, we yes. just started with introversion and, and extroversion. Yes. Is those the introver- introverted and extroverted? So I'm an extroverted introvert is the way I describe myself. <sighs> Are you, do you follow Simon Sinek? Are you Simon Sinek fans? Do you know who Simon Sinek is? No. I remember Simon Sinek. Yes. Okay. Oh, Canada's got it. Simon Canada's Sinek is amazing. He's like one of my favorite human beings. Um, he doesn't know this, but like, he, he might be married already, but like, I'm going to marry him one day. Um, but um, <laughs> no, he's like super smart, but he does this whole like thing on introverted, extroverted. And like, I so related to it because people did not believe me that I was an introvert. Did you ever at take all. that quiz they give you for a lot? Yeah, I've done personality quizzes, and they all put me on the like extrovert spectrum thing. Like I'm the um, that's why those things I'm are bullshit. I'm the creative. Yeah. I'm the like, woo, let's go do things. But I don't you think I they're measuring that. the wrong shit to get there? I think they are, and I because I can play that well, right? Like I do good with people. I like people. It's, it's what you they're measuring the act, yes. not the real person, not and that's the what under. she used to say. Yes, yes. And like I can do the extra, I can people, I can do, I can people really well. I'm really good at peopling. Um, one on one or mass largest groups? Yes, all of the above. I can really, and I don't get anxiety about it. Like I'm fine with it. I'm good, but I need at some point to like you know plug my iPhone back in, right? Like I got to mm-hmm. plug myself back into the wall, and like that happens when it's alone. Yeah. And quiet. Are you able to schedule Nothing. your your work trips and all of your production and everything around? No, I'm see I've just come to terms with the fact that I'm an introvert during COVID. Uh, and so this is, new. It's a new I, you. this is new and so I'm learning that I actually have like this is a self-care that I have to do is to schedule in that time because mm-hmm. I wasn't and what would happen ever since I was a kid my mom will say this like from when I was like 5 years old. I would go 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 get sick, sleep for a week yep. and then go 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 and that gets sick for a week is like when I'm I can't people anymore and if I don't give myself that recharge time then I just I die that's hilarious I was the exact same way I'd get strep throat every year and I don't even know if it was really strep throat or not it was just simply it was your body saying F you Mm -hmm. stop yeah stop for sure stop (laughs) for sure because oh, it would knock you out. And, and then right. just like your mom said, you're, you go from blah, blah, blah to pfft. Yeah. And I won't stop otherwise unless my body forces me. I right. think that uh, it seems to me like, you know, what actually measures the introversion, extroversion thing is whether you are energized or depleted from yes. those scenarios Agreed. of being around other social engagements and scenarios. Yeah. I have always been depleted, except yeah. in my 20s, I discovered alcohol. And that was like a <laughs> liquid... For some people, it's courage. For some people, it's a right. motivator. Whatever the heck, it was just energy for me. Yeah. And then I found that oh, I could be around people, and then I had the energy to drive to the top of that. To keep din going. And and to be at the top of that din, and then be the life of the party, funny guy, whatever the fuck, yeah. annoying, maybe, <laughs> probably, but the big guy who had no problem being in those. We stopped drinking because it's we thought it was stupid after enough time, but yeah. uh, mainly health reasons and stuff. Uh, and I can't even imagine. Uh, going into those scenarios anymore because I don't have the energy. I yeah. just couldn't even no. get it there. Yeah. I mean, I, st- I, 
I've built this life for myself that is so extroverted, and so I, I have to, and I, and I do enjoy it, and I can do it, and I think that's the power of what you said and what Simon Sinek says as well, is this idea that, like, do you get energized from it, or do you get depleted from it, and it's not whether you like people or not. Like, you could be an extrovert and have social anxiety, or you could be an introvert and really love being around people, but, like, it's, it's draining. It takes something... They out of to, you if you're an introvert, I think. It's exhausting. They used to call it... When I, Can like I ask a question, years. please? Yes, and, and help me here. Did they used to call it social anxiety disorder? Is that oh, what I it used to be? Oh, I don't know. Do you know. remember that? I don't know. Nobody I remembers do. that? I do. <laughs> I was like armchair diagnosed by that with some friends oh, who were just really like, you just don't like whatever. I'm like, it's not that. You're not yeah. in here. You have it no idea. It was one of those armchair diagnoses of like, oh, at parties, you're quieter. <laughs> it's like... But, yeah. No. Uh, what so what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, there's lots of reasons to be quiet. But there was a, there was a question from, uh, yes, from Canada. From Canada. That's, uh, not, not okay. So, no, no, no. Because we all host podcasts here, and I find that this might be a uh, a particularly good uh, you know therapy session, group therapy session episode. Because I'm super curious. For for me personally, the at the um, analogy that I've used is like I see a lot of people who go out and be fit and are really excited to be fit whether they're running or they're working out and they get like really excited endorphins from that yet it depletes their body as well. And they need rest from it for me. Like I did two podcasts yesterday for my, for my men's mental wellness podcast and a really long podcast for the Letterman podcast the day before, like during them. And right after I felt like I was on top of the world. Like it just felt amazing. But yes. today I literally wanted to crawl into a hole and not have <laughs> anybody around me. And, yes. and, 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 you know, like, is it, is it, is it a correct analogy talking about the fitness, but this is just more of a mental emotional thing because that's the thing that gives I us those endorphins. I think that's a really good analogy because I feel like, like I teach these classes, I teach shop management classes and it's like an eight hour long class and, and I dread it up until the minute it starts. I'm oh. like, ugh, maybe nobody will show up. Like every single time, I'm like, maybe nobody will come. Hilarious. And I won't have to do it. But then That's the like minute I start people. talking, the minute I start talking, I am high as a kite. I'm in my element. I am jazzed. I'm teaching. I'm dynamic. I'm all of the things. And then after eight hours of like energy and, and exerting and peopling, like, I don't want to form sentences. I don't want to talk to anybody. Mm -hmm. It's like I just ran a marathon. I think it's a fantastic analogy. Like, because you do get that high of like, woo, we're doing the damn thing. And then and then I'm done and I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to stare at this dot on the wall. Mike, yeah, I can't <laughs> even think or answer yeah. a question. Yeah. Mike, do you watch Joe Rogan ever? Uh, as much as I possibly can. He talks about <laughs> that exact thing. <laughs> Really? Uh, yeah, t either either with I think it was for Russell, whoever he had before. Russell Brand, somebody yeah, somebody before that. Okay, before maybe the episode that. before Russell Brand. Sorry, oh, I saw this one. I haven't yeah. watched it in a while. Was with it Chris. Eric uh, Hochstein, whatever the guy who? Um, no, okie doke shit. <laughs> right, damn it! Oh, well, someone yeah. I knew, but like, <laughs> it's that idea that you get rid of that some of it by working out. We, yeah. When you yep. mention, uh, you know, you dread it, you dread it, but then once you get in there, vroom, yeah. energized. Do you think that's like the creative tether, like the Maybe. where ideas come from thing? Because like, you know, you're... I don't know. Or is it, do you get energized from the other people, which in their case, maybe you are a little bit of an extrovert. Uh, Hard to say. I mean, I think that's why everybody thinks I'm an extrovert. Um, and I, like, I, I, I don't know. Maybe I think it's like a little bit of the the performance of it. Mm. Um, it's like I've I put on my character, and that, but that's not really accurate either because I I feel like I'm being authentically me, and I, I when I'm teaching particularly, I tend to get like really just I love teaching. Mm -hmm. I love 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 teaching. And oh, the well, minute that sounds I start, like part of it. It like it's it turn turns me on. That's not the right phrase. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't turn me on. I want to go to your school. Um, Where are you <laughs> <laughs> that's not what I meant um, but you know what I mean right like it, it like it's my element right like I'm in my element but it is exhausting and it's weird I've set up this life for myself where like the things that fill me up the most are simultaneously the things that deplete me the most well but that's good isn't it is it I don't know I think it's good I think it's good okay, because we're gonna you're go doing with that. the I things like that. you're doing the things that you're that you're uh, that you're passionate about which yeah. is good and then that gives that creative Exhausting. energy that tether thing which then 
like supercharges it. I feel yeah. like you're living your purpose. Anybody who's doing yeah. it that way is living their purpose. I think there's also a high burnout with living a, a purpose, right? Like sometimes I remember yeah. being in high school and like being like, I wish I was just normal. Like I wish I wasn't like, I wish I just was satisfied with just going to school and having some friends and doing some stuff. And like, but I always was driven by this like bigger thing. And sometimes I really wish that I wasn't because mm-hmm. it would kind of be nice to just come home at the end of the day at like five o'clock and be like, I'm done. I'm going to hang out. Turn your brain off. Turn my brain off. Punch the clock out and be done. Yeah. And instead I'm like, I've got nine million things that I have to do all yeah. the time. How am I supposed to watch Weekend at Bernie's tonight? <laughs> right. I've never seen that. <laughs> what? That's, a, that's another the podcast. the worst when it comes to like anything Anything really like, like TV, pop culture stuff? movies, pop culture, names of actors, actresses. I know nothing. People will be like, you know that guy, so and so. I'm like, no. He was in this movie, haven't seen it. He oh, was in this other not... movie, haven't seen it. How about That's... this movie? Haven't seen it. Nope. That makes you so interesting for like a multitude of <laughs> other reasons. It's for for real. I, we, I this is name drop coming up. Uh-oh. We had Rain Wilson on the show a couple weeks ago because she used to work with him. Okay, I know who that is. People, lo- you do right? Do, I don't. Oh, you don't know who that no. is? No, okay. or maybe I do. I don't know names. I'm bad. You remember the show The Office? He was on that show. I have not seen it, but I've heard of Me it. Me neither. So oh, okay. other people liked that show like really, really good because it was interesting. Because yeah. I didn't know what the fuck anything was. I didn't know it. It just made it. It right. just made it more interesting. Oh, interesting. Okay. So if you're not like on the same menu that everybody else is yeah i call it a different frequency but whatever if you're not watching the same shit yeah not a different program yeah then you've got other stuff yeah which probably not necessarily good stuff but other stuff interesting stuff i think it does make like people who are quoters of movies and comedy and that kind of stuff like i think they're so funny because i think that they're original like i think it's them (laughs) and they're like i that's not my joke i'm like oh well you should have claimed it because i would have believed it (laughs) That's hilarious. You don't get the frame of reference. Yeah, totally. I dated this guy for a while and it drove him crazy that I didn't know any of the references. I'm like, take it as a compliment. I just think you're funny. But you were laughing anyway. Yeah. Aww. I just thought he was clever. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's really funny. Tig Notaro used to host a show that was, you know who I know she that is? name. You I know, know that name. Yeah. She's yeah. a female comedian. Yeah. Um, she used to do a, a show where she didn't know who she the guest was. The, the people guest, would produce yeah. it and she had to sit there oh. chair and chair. And they oh, were only like five or ten minutes long. Fun. And it was, I don't know who I'm talking to, with Tig Notaro or something like that. And she would like just that. literally have to ask questions. And then sometimes the name would be so big, she'd be so embarrassed because, of course, she knows the name. <laughs> But she doesn't make the connection with who the person is until halfway through. I have so good. okay. So I, feel and like I, you'd I be don't good even at that. I don't even remember the name of the person anymore because I'm that bad. But he's like a famous athlete, like like famous, famous, like big something. I don't know, like somebody I was supposed to know. Kobe Bryant. I, no, it was like he was he was like he's older. He's retired now. Um, and I'll remember the name when I like at three o'clock in the morning. Michael Jordan. Um, no, I don't know anything about sports. I, yeah, me neither. Me Wayne neither. Gretzky. So I'm at I'm, <laughs> Wayne Gretzky from Canada. I'm, no, <laughs> I'm at SEMA, and I was sitting in the Borla booth, and um, and he comes up, and he's wearing a shirt that says Classic Industries, which is a company that often sponsors and does work with All Girls Garage, and yeah. and so I didn't know who he was, and so I looked, I saw his shirt, and I was like, my I got introduced to him by Elise Borla, and she's like, oh, do you know who and so and so and so? <laughs> Like no, I was like, but your company works with all girls garage lot. And he's like, what? Because he's wearing the shirt, so and you think and he's he representing? And he looks down at his shirt, and he just looks at me like, how do you not know who I am? And and Elise Borla looks over, and she's like, don't you know that that's blah 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 blah? And I'm like, I, I don't know. oh, I, I love don't, it. I don't know. I'm so it's so awkward. It's so bad. I was so mortified. <laughs> I used to get hired to, I used to be a producer professionally before this nonsense. And I used to get hired to work for ESPN a lot just, okay. just because. Okay. And I would always work with the, exactly what you're talking about, the top tier yeah. people, the highest guy from football, Gronkowski, yeah. the, the highest guy, Kobe Bryant for the snooks for the And not thing. know anything. I didn't get, and it was like, I could work hand in hand. We're talking back and forth, the script, mm-hmm. you know, let's be, no problem because like you said, no pretense. Yeah. I kind of like you're that better though. Right, I, as a form, said I know, right? Publicists like they love that. Yeah, like you have no pretense of yeah. anything about, and they want. That's yeah. great because, like, I I want people to treat me just like a normal person, not like who they think I am from TV, TV. right? So when I meet people. And like, okay, so I'm, I'm like the single girl, right? So the dating world is really freaking rough when you're on TV because people are like, I watch you every Saturday. I'm like, oh, no, boy, this isn't going to work out. Like, you, I'm not who you think I am. I'm not who you think I am, right? That is a small piece of, of who I am. Mm. And I, I would rather, like, when people tell me, oh, I didn't even, I'd never heard of you before. I'm like, oh, good. 
Awesome. Mm-hmm. Yep. Awesome. Now we can be friends. We can be real anyway. Yeah. Now I can be a real person. Oh, gosh. You Speaking of which, um, Here we go. on the Instagram right now, BBWB Wizard uh, says you look beautiful, Bogey, and uh, a bunch of other things about you, including I don't know if you know who that is or not, I, but uh, I do. you do. Okay. Right. <laughs> well, lots of love and multiple comments. You are an amazing woman, and I love the roses you sent. And other comments as well. So just so you're aware. The okay. roses you sent. That's somebody else. All right. A whole other thing. Yep. Uh, let's move on. I have a question <laughs> for you from, um, from do you know, do you know who, what the M shop is in Los Angeles? The M shop. Is it BMW related? It is. BMW okay. and, uh, and Mini, like the, they do the supercharged okay. minis. Sweet. But, but, but Joe, but, who but, owns but. the M shop, uh, wanted me to ask you something very okay. specific. Not, not, we're already getting to the group comment. Um, Am I? Is this like a quiz? Am I getting tested no. on my BMW knowledge? I want her BMW S62 powered 57 ah. traffic pickup. Ask her if it's for ah, sale. Ah, ah. I mean, anything is for sale for the right price, <laughs> right? Um, I, so, what's this car? Tell okay. me about this thing. So, I do these large scale all female builds. These like massive builds where we take a vehicle from bare metal and bring it to SEMA show car. And it's women from all over the country come together. It's women with zero experience, women who are hobbyists, women who are professionals in the industry, um, like the full gamut of people. So the very first build that we did was a 57 Chevy pickup truck um, that I put a BMW M5 engine <laughs> in because I'm weird like that. Um, is the S62, is that the V8 from the uh, It is the V8. It's naturally aspirated, uh, yeah. A39 wow. yeah. That's a killer motor. It's like it the is. best, the last it great motor they built. We need to do some crazy. I agree. I agree. I think BMW has like lost its way a little bit, especially with those grills. Like, what are they doing with the grills? They're gonna find their way back, but it's awful. They're right like now. woodchucks. This is this is bangle times ten. We're all fucked with They're with awful. BMW. They're it's awful. awful, and I the love BMW, on the but <laughs> the woodchuck. I can't get over the woodchuck. It's awful, but anyway. They'll so come back. yeah, we had to modify the hell out of the uh, S62 engine. So like, we got rid of the Vanos on it, so it's fixed cams. We had to oh. put in a dry sump oil system because it surprisingly wouldn't fit in the engine compartment. The Did you way keep it the manual transmission? Was we kept yes, it's a BMW six-speed manual right. trans. Wow. Had to do a ton of craziness on that because of the location of the shifter and the angles and like <laughs> things are things are weird. Like the way that BMW has their shifter, it's it's got a different like leverage point than uh-huh. typical. Um, and it also sits really level with the engine. Uh-huh. Whereas like Chevy's and Ford's like they're kind of offset. It'll right? be at a thing, yeah. But on BMW's they're very like right in line. And so the engine had to be down just like the drawings. really low, right? <laughs> Perfection. <laughs> it had to be down super, super low so that the transmission wasn't sitting on the bench seat in the cab so everything had to sit really low which meant we were going to either have to like not have anything connecting the frame at the front or get rid of the oil pan oh so we God. found a, a dynan um dry sump oil system for that engine and it's just it's goofy as hell um that's and so I, weird i would consider selling it to answer the question to like stay on <laughs> to stay on track here um i would consider it however like the main purpose of the builds is really as conversation starters. Like that's why I do goofy stuff because when you when you go to a car show, you know, you you walk by a beautiful car and you're like, oh nice Chevelle. But you keep walking, mm-hmm. right? Unless it's something so amazing that you're forced to stop and talk to them. But when you walk by a 57 Chevy pickup truck with a BMW engine in it, you go, Err? <laughs> what? What? Why? Yeah. Who and why, why, why you... would they do yeah. this? Yeah. And then, and then I how? get to bombard them with how awesome women in the trades are and how we really need to see an increase in women in the trades. And so it's like this conversation starter. So I do these builds that are intentionally goofy to A, prove that anything you dream up, you can make happen. That when you, even if you don't know how to do something or don't know if it's possible when you team up with people and you find your tribe and you find your your crew, like you can make it happen um, to prove that women can do this stuff, to prove to ourselves that we can do it and to be a little controversial and start conversations to bring attention to women in the trades. So that's the purpose. All of that's beautiful. I just would change one thing. I wouldn't call it goofy. I'd call it provocative. Okay, I like they, that. They're, they're, that they're, sounds they're, better. You make these provocative builds that that, yeah. that that get people's gears turning in their heads, going, "Well, well, well what, why, why? Why did they do that? How how, how did yeah. they do that?" I mean, There's it's a lot more going practical. on here than I thought. Like, it doesn't. None of the builds that I've done are practical. Like, they didn't. It does not make sense to put a BMW M5 engine in a Chevy pickup. None. It does not. It's the worst choice. Make sense to do a body swap between a Volvo S60 and a 
PV544. Like, these are things that Ooh. don't make sense. Whoa, wait. T- go, what's that one? That sounds cool. T- say that one again? So our most recent bill, this one unveiled at SEMA this past year. So this is a 1961 Volvo PV544. Oh. We body swapped it with a um, 2019 Volvo S60 hybrid. So it's a four-cylinder engine that's turbocharged and supercharged, what? and it has a rear electric motor. What? 415 horsepower, I think. Um, and it's just absolutely ridiculous. Like two unibody cars, we basically cut two cars in half, swapped them, shrunk them, stretched them, pushed them, pulled them, cut things up. We integrated 90% of the technology from the... S60 into the PV, so it's got front and rear cameras. It's got the sunroof. Wow. We took the dash out of the S60, and we cut it up and made it smaller. We took the seats out of the S60, and we cut them in half and took two inches out of them and welded them back together. Well, like We did stupid stuff. Like It's not practical, but it was about pushing ourselves and learning and, and like doing different things. Just doing something different. Was it mainly the chassis of the new car? And yeah, then so, b- mainly the body around? Yeah. On the, so I've I actually, seen I, that. I did send you pictures of it. Oh, crap. <laughs> yeah, hang on. <laughs> Should I read the email to everybody? <laughs> Sorry for the super late response. <laughs> Ten minutes before I got here. I will fully own up to this. This is my, uh, yeah. Also late in life diagnosed ADD. Like everything is last minute. Yes. But um, I, I've seen like BMW, we speaking of that, uh, the, the uh, E39 M5, I've seen people do the old 635, uh, that old 60s BMW shark body on that E39 chassis, which to me was like the, perf- that. That's... the most perfect thing in the world because you have that classy look with it. Yeah. I'm assuming it was something like that because I've driven the old, like P1800 and stuff. And yeah. when you drive an original one, it's not nearly as much car as you remember it being. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> Although they're fun, in their, they're fun in their own right. So I have a Nash Metropolitan that I, it's just like, it's nothing special. It's just a Nash Metropolitan. But like, it maybe goes 70 miles an hour if you're lucky. It's like yeah. not a fast car. But everything is so loose and primitive on it that when you're driving it, it feels like you're going 80 when you're going 40 yeah, and so it's that's kind of the I meant. worst quality car but you are smiling the entire time because you're just having so much, you're like Wee! i'm taking a right hand turn at 25 and it feels like i'm living on the edge <laughs> what you're describing to me is one of the like that's the reason to own a car yeah. whether you have that feeling in it or not yeah and hey if you can get the feeling of 80 miles an hour at 20 miles an hour it's so much safer and same feeling <laughs> It feels like a win-win all the way around. <laughs> How are you with the autonomous shit and everything else? I, I don't want to uh, like be controversial. You know, okay, so taking all the controversy pieces out of it, mm-hmm. um, I'm a technician at heart. Like, I am a mechanic. I like taking things apart and putting them back together. I'm a puzzle person. I don't care what it is. I just, I, I, I'm a little bit of a wrench whore. I'll work on anything. I don't care what it is. I'm not. I'm a, sorry, what? A wrench whore. Okay, got um, it. Like, Never heard I, that before. I'm not a typical car person in that, like, oh, I'm, I'm a Ford guy or I'm a Chevy guy or I'm a mm. whatever. Well, I'm not a guy at all, but you know what I mean. <laughs> um, but, like, I, I just like working on them. So for me, the autonomous vehicles, the electric vehicles, all of that stuff, it's just more stuff to learn and figure out. So okay. that's fun and exciting for me. But isn't it like ones and zeros fun? It's computer it, fun, right? It it's can not. Be. Uh, uh, I mean, yes wrenching. and no, but there's still all like, you still have brakes, you still have a cooling system, you still have window regulators and radios and power seats and windshield wipe. Like all of those things still exist. There's. Just, Are you a windshield wiper modder? Are it, you one of those people who mods their windshield wiper? <laughs> oh yeah, they, you know it. You know it. I know um, what you mean though, because everybody who has a Tesla now is putting suspension and stuff on yeah, it. Yeah, and like everybody thinks like uh, I'll digress a little bit into the controversy piece of it. Like it's <laughs> okay. When they came out with with veggie burgers, Mm. their mistake was calling them burgers. Mm -hmm. Because a veggie burger by itself, as its own thing, is actually quite delicious. I I share this argument. I've made it myself. But when you think of it as a burger, it falls short. Mm -hmm. So like the 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 mock e. I don't like things that are trying to be something else. Don't try what you are. Just just do you. Just be you, boo. And we're gonna (laughs) love you for what you are. (laughs) Right. So boo, you just gotta do you. You just gotta do you. You just gotta do you. Your electric vehicle is cool. Um, but so I think that's part of the issue is the is the branding and the packaging of it, but. I, I think this whole myth, Wait, are you saying it's a veggie burger? Yes. Oh, because it's, it's still good a car. Oh, yeah, itself. you're right, you're like, right, you're right. It's good right, in its own right. right, but when you compare it to the other, like just take oh, it shit. as its own thing, right? Just take it as its own thing. Needs a new name. It needs a new name. But, <laughs> yes. 
I think um, there's, you know, there's this like idea that electric vehicles are going to put mechanics out of business. And mm. it's just not, it's just not true. Just like fuel injection didn't put mechanics out of Do business. Do people really think that? I've never oh, heard that. Oh, yeah. Argument. I hear it all the time. No, it's, I mean, it's going to put out if of business. If you're not going to adapt, Yeah, it's sure. going to put out of business people who don't want to learn the new stuff, mm-hmm. right? So learn the, learn the new stuff. It's interesting. Mm. Um, I think the thing about autonomous vehicles that scares me to be like serious here for a hot second. So we don't, in Canada, y'all are like <laughs> civilized and stuff. And you have like national certifications and like licenses and stuff. But like here in the United States, my, my nail technician, not that I've done my nails recently, but my nail technician needs more of a license than a mechanic does. And so autonomous oh, vehicles scare me because if anybody can work on them, then what happens when somebody who doesn't really understand them screws something up and now the sensors are misaligned and the car drives into oncoming traffic because it wasn't aligned properly or yeah. adjusted properly? That's what scares me. I think it's going to force us. It's that Boeing plane. Into it's the that. same thing that kept yes. going. Through. I, I have made that argument as so well. So I think it's more and more important now. Like we have ASC certifications, it's voluntary, right? But like it's more important now than ever that you actually go to certified shops and certified technicians because there's a lot of stuff that can you, you can f up. We're driving around and rolling computers. Oh, you're making me scared. I'm now. sorry. I'm I'm being depressing. No, it's I? turn. It's like 1984. All of you know. I mean, it's like all yeah. coming it's around. Just so there's so much. Our cars today have more control modules than the first space shuttle. They're complicated. We drive old cars. I can't deal with all of the screens and everything else. Neurologically speaking, like I just it's can't keep up. Yeah. I like to drive. I don't know how to manage all of the things that are keeping me from driving. I am with you. However, I will say that when I rent cars and they have CarPlay. I'm like, this is kind of, because my cars don't have them at Mm -hmm. home, but I rent a car and I'm like, oh, having navigation automatically integrated and my Bluetooth automatically picking up and like my my text message is being read. This is kind of nice. I agree with that, but you're blowing my mind because I would never connect my phone to a rental car. (laughs) Oh. Am I not supposed to do that? I don't know. I did it in, I've done it in a couple press cars. And then when, when you go to look at the stuff and then you see all the other people's fucking shit well, that's in there from before, I'm like, oh, delete it I when forgot. you're done, silly. All right. Well, if you remember to do that. Yeah. I'm not that Cause I'm Because my, my older brother was a, like, like a techie guy and he was very like paranoid about all of the things. And I I inherited, I'm not techie, but I but inherited that But are you good with keeping up him. with all that? To me, it's just too much these days. Everything's too much. Oh, I see. Everything's too much. But I have enough paranoia. Of like, you know, hacking. Like, I won't get like one of the automatic thermostat things, or the like, nest. I don't want anything that people can hack into my house and like take over and hold me hostage. And I know that that's probably that's not all ones like, and zeros. A Every thing, computer has that, but it scares me. It is a thing. It's very it, it, real. It is a thing. Right? Every single ones and zeros that's connected to the internet yeah. can be hacked, and, and that's what blows even, me away. And it's not even like I worry about Big Brother, but like Big Brother's been monitoring us for forever. I worry about like the hackers, like just like yes. the the criminals who are like, well, "We're going to get into your stuff." No, n- n- yeah, no do gooders. Well, yeah. well, you, you don't watch anything, but there's a show on <laughs> on Amazon you called so uh, well already. called Upload, <laughs> and it's about uh, like life after death, and now they can keep the consciousness and they l- upload it and blah oh, blah, yeah. blah 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 whatever. This one guy they dies did a black in the movie. Totally, they did do a black it's the same thing but it's a whole series on oh, it. nice. and it's kind of that. comedy and light okay all of this to say the guy dies in an autonomous car because in the future uh-huh. you can choose between do you want to protect the what do you want to prioritize protection of the occupants in the vehicle or the people on the street or oh. the car itself and someone can hack in and switch it so the car didn't care about the occupant basically somebody yeah. wanted to murder this guy so they had ai do it Interesting. And I was like, and, and this well, is, that could happen today. Right. I mean, this is real <laughs> stuff, right? Like, that's why I loved Black Mirror. Like, I did actually watch all of Black Mirror, and it is for that reason. It's like, it's stuff that's it's happening, and it's terrifying. We sound like our grandparents. We do. <laughs> These VCRs, you can play back anything after you've recorded it. <laughs> we are our grandparents, damn it. Do, do you do you notice that happening? Because I noticed oh, God, over yeah. COVID for sure. Whatever the growing, but whatever the age I was during COVID, it's oh, when yeah. you turn into your parents. I am so I am so my parents, and I know they're watching right now. Yes, I am becoming you. It is. I think the without further ado is my dad. One hundred percent. That's my father. That should be the name of your podcast. You should just that's lean what into somebody it. Else just said. lean into it. Why not? Because it doesn't describe what the podcast is about. No, th- it, we're over that. <laughs> I'm starting one with a friend and we're calling it Moving Right Along because we just, we're just fucking. I like that. 
tangent people. I know. I already bought the domain, though. It's too late. Oh, okay. I'm what pot, is it called? I'm pot committed. Okay, so it's been called Trades Lady Happy Hour, which is horribly just bland. I started it during COVID, and it was an Instagram live series only. Um, I believe next week is going to be, the, if I can get my ish together, next week is going to be the first week where it changes. Um, and it is being rebranded as With Her Two Hands. Mm, okay. And it is um, all about uh, conversations with and about trades women. And what as we, in these things were made with the, their two things, hands. Yep, things yeah, that you built beautiful. and made, careers that involve these. That's awesome. Yeah. That's beautiful, too. Thank you. Kind of I'm really excited. So we're going to be like expanding from just the automotive trades. Like we've done automotive, we've done helicopter, airplane, blacksmiths, pipe um, fitters. We've done all sorts of like forays into different, some different trades, but I'm going to be expanding a lot more into all sorts of different trades. What? Do you fly? I, 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 am, I mean, do you know how to fly? I do not know how to fly. Oh, okay. No, no. But I've interviewed some incredible female airplane mechanics. And let me tell you, those the ladies that I've interviewed who are airplane mechanics, like they've got their ish together. They're like babies. They're in their 20s, and they are so smart and so on top of it and so well-spoken. I was so impressed. Rad. Yeah. I was super impressed with them. So we're not worried about the airline industry in the future. The no. automotive is still questionable. Automotive is a little questionable still, yeah. <laughs> I will say this. There were a couple years there where I thought cars were over just from a design standpoint. I was like, everything being made, well, BMW, and yeah. I was like, everything being made is so ugly. And in the last couple years, I found that some really good-looking cars have hit the streets, but they're not the marks they used to be. I find like... Hyundai and Kia and some other Dude. like cars. Kia t- is Hyundai one of the best Hyundai and Kia looking has cars. like they have upped their game. Like when we were kids, Volvo I'm assuming we're Volvo. like around the same age ish. Um, I'll say if you will. I'm 45. Same year. Oh. When's your birthday? December 15th. September 5th. Aww. 6th. Damn it. Did you just forget your own birthday? Yeah, there's a it reason though. Oh, okay. The time. I was born on my mom's birthday, okay. so it so was really confused. never. Mi- it was really never mine. Oh, speaking of the introvert extrovert. <laughs> yes, my mom got married mom on her birthday, presents. so ah. my dad never got an anniversary celebration because it was always mom's birthday. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, what were we talking about? <laughs> I don't know. My family drama. Uh, yeah, I have no idea. What the we're Hyundai saying. Pony. Oh, you're the best. What? What did he say? Missed it. You want to know what you guys were talking about? You were talking about the Hyundai Pony. The oh, Hyundai. Hyundai's the Hyundai. Up for yeah. Us. So oh, good. yeah. So when we, thank you. So when we were kids, like the the kids' car, the entry level car was like Volkswagen or Honda. They mm-hmm. were like the every person's car, right? They were affordable. They were reliable and I consistent. I had the used Honda Accord yeah. hatchback. Yeah. And then Hyundai and Kia kind of came in, and they were like, then they became the economy entry level car. But they have stepped up. Yeah, but they were their, crap back then. They were crap back then. I mean, like when they got here, it was sort of a but joke. Now it was they like, oh, like, we lost a Zuzu and Suzuki, but we got this and that. They stepped up their game. They like slid in under the radar, and like nobody took them seriously because they were such crap cars. And now, like, they make some nice stuff. When Hyundai came out with that Genesis brand that they yeah. don't even associate with Hyundai right? anymore, yeah. we were like, wait a second. They can do this because it look making it look great and the fit and fit that's all fine. But yeah. then you making a car actually drive well and like right. perform well. It was pretty impressive. And that yeah. Kia Stinger, I think, a couple years ago, that was never yeah, a car was, for me, but it yeah, was very it impressive was, with what they did with it. Totally. I kind of, I just yeah. all of a sudden, I felt like I became my my grandfather again. Again, at the same again timing. it's happening. And I'm like, well, I'm gonna buy a Camry or whatever the whatever the <laughs> yeah. They're they they are impressive, and I think they are such a story of like you know uh, when when. Like, go ahead, underestimate me, right? Like, Hyundai and Kia uh. came in, and, like, everybody underestimated them, and they're like, do, 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 do. They never We're cared. We're just going to take over. They know. They're like, go ahead, underestimate me. We're just going to keep doing our thing, We're and eventually it'll be better than yours. Yeah. Ooh, that's frightening. I know. Because the, the buy-in on some of those cars, when you compare them to, say, a BMW or the Mercedes equivalent, is, yeah. like, ridiculous. Yeah, and, and it, you get all the opinion, same bells and whistles. And kind of sometimes a nicer car. Sometimes. No big a crazy controversial grill. right there. We're going to piss some people off with that. No, It's worse than the autonomous thing. <laughs> Do they drive as well? What's that? Do they drive as well? As well um, as tough. I mean, yeah. It, no. But will they soon? Because Maybe. they've incrementally yeah. gotten better across the yeah. board. Yeah. So they're chasing it. And I think it's a matter of what, you, what you're what you used to. Like drive well is a pers- like a perspective thing and like the feel of a drive, right? Like some That's why Mercedes I can't drive and cars. BMW, they drive very differently. 
they have a different feel to it. And some people love the way Mercedes drives and hates the way BMW drives, and some people are the opposite. Like, it's you, but it's just a different. Do you still feeling. even agree with that statement though? Because I find it less so every day or year, and maybe not even true anymore. To, when I was a kid, BMW, agree. Mercedes, yeah. Audi, they all drove completely different, and that's why yeah. you kind of chose one brand over the other. And maybe I'm now still stuck in older cars. Like my, I mean, my newest car is a 2011. Um, <laughs> Our newest car is an 06. <laughs> <laughs> so but, you, you're a kid. <laughs> I, I know. I know. <laughs> what is your What is your 06? Um, my um, my 2011. Uh, oh, a, sorry. I mean your it's a BMW 335. Oh, um, that's awesome. And it's it's fun, but I have, it's getting a, a warranty paint job right now, and I'm driving my 01 E46, and I love the way it drives. I love the way the old E46. Was, was the there. 11? Is that still an E90 or an E92? It's an E92. Yeah, it's a oh, two door. Yeah. Oh, which which one do you have? Because I I used to love it. Is it an it's, IS? Is it a regular? It's, it's an IS. Love, and then love, I modified love. it. I did like a cob tuning on it and other things and stuff and stuff and things. I'm gonna go on the record and say you have the best well, thank you. of that generation car. I've gotten, I agree. I've had this conversation with Matt Farrow on his show about it, and he's like, "Really over the M?" And I'm like, "Dude, I've had yeah. both. You don't understand. The M is awesome on the track, but it makes no sense on the street if you've driven the right. 335. There's so much instant, immediate torque. It's more drivable. And the price difference, right? Like I can get a 335 for so much less than an M, and with just a little bit of upgrade. It's way less than the amount you that you pay for You could spend $500 on that and make it every bit the M Right. Car. I threw the Cobb Speed-wise. in there, and I'm, it's phenomenal. The Cobb's probably like 1500 bucks, maybe a little more. <laughs> that's a good That's a good tune. Yeah, it's great. But is it still a piggyback, or do you have to – it's not a it's, – um, it's, it's a piggyback. Yeah. I love that. And then yeah. so you can just unplug it yeah. and take it out. Yeah. Oh. And then not void I still have a turbo tuner. Although mine's from, out of warranty you know, at this point. I still have one of those from yeah. one of those cars I had. Yeah. <laughs> Every They're time great. I see it in a box, I'm like, I should give this to somebody. <laughs> it's probably I have a lot been of coded like out. That. I should do something with this. Yeah. <laughs> is is uh, the is your IS uh, manual? It is not. Yeah. Wah, wah, wah. When rare I, of, so... rare, most of them weren't. Okay, so when I got it in my defense, because <laughs> I really disclaimer would disclaimer coming, folks. Disclaimer. Okay, I would really prefer to have a stick shift. I would way prefer that. However. I owned my repair shop at the time, and my staff, I bought this car. It was lightly used. My staff at the time overrode me and told me I was not allowed to have a manual transmission (laughs) because they knew me because I'm constantly doing 75 things at once, right? Like I'm doing all of the things, and they're like, you can't also be shifting. You, because you're just gonna, you're a multitasker, and you're not allowed to have a manual. Is that true? Are you in the car? You're multitasking. Yeah. Sure. Oh, really? That's interesting. So we don't align there. I'm like Mr. Monotask, uh, no radio. We don't talk. See, I actually function better when I'm. I it's. I think it's at the ADD, ADHD. I don't want to self-diagnose or undermine like any of that or <laughs> undervalue it or diminish it. Like, but I have something. I have something. <laughs> um, I do better. When there's lots of things going on, right? Like, and that's I think why I did well as a business owner because I could be sitting in my office doing accounting, answering the phone, listen to a conversation that was happening over there, and be like, "Hold on one second, no, that's not true. He's coming this afternoon," and like that's where I function my Sounds best. Sounds very familiar, right? To the old her, feels yeah. so familiar. Yeah, and don't, if I'm don't let not that burn you out, doing though. all of the things, I can't focus. So I'm learning to work with it. So this is I was Heads just having up. this conversation. No one uh, that you're doing anything, anything for cares. I, so relax and do what you want to do. But I function better. It's for doing you, it that yeah, way. right. You're happier. Like, well, so uh, this we is what all I've do. Learned. But that's what white noise is for. But yes, music exactly. Or whatever. That's why I work at coffee shops now. Good. Like I go to a coffee shop and I and I can get so much done. I can focus. Because like four of my five channels are occupied with the background Wild. noise that it allows me to actually focus on the thing. But if I'm in a quiet room and there's the nothing worst. else happening, the worst. I can't. I'm too like. Because mm-hmm. if a dog barks or a car horn in the distance or whatever, yeah. you all I need the yeah. din of stuff. Yep. Sounds very familiar. It's interesting. That was it? her. Yeah, that was her for sure. I mean, I told you on the road 40 weeks here, but just mm, mm, manic frenzy of other stuff happening whenever she wasn't on the road. Yeah, I think of I coders and like the hackers and yeah. stuff where they've got that techno doom, 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 yeah. doom, or some kind of crazy thing in their head so that it allows them to then it's focus. It's our yes. sleep without TV. I get it. You need to just Say it again. It's how you what? Go to sleep. With it, the TV on in the background. Oh, see, I, I, I can't It gives in my brain something to think about. I can't go to sleep with the TV on though, so I'm different than you on that one. Like if... So I need like five channels occupied, right? So the TV is just one channel. And if it's happening 
I listen to it and I focus on it and I get really invested and then I can't fall asleep. I'll be up until three in the morning because the TV is on. For her, more of like you got your thoughts going if the TV isn't on, then then the TV goes on yeah. and it shuts the thoughts. I off. just have to exhaust I myself think so about much this. Yeah. that I pass out. Like that's really what it is. If I'm not completely exhausted. Yeah. Then I won't fall asleep. You I said that too, and I drink a lot to go to bed. <laughs> well, that's what I'm thinking. You would, you would, ha- you would be so wired from whatever the social thing was. You'd come home and have another glass of I wine had just to, to, to just to chill out, just to chill out at yeah. two right, in the morning. Down. Yeah, yeah. Or I play like stupid games with myself, like in my head, to like met, like force myself to shut down. I have like, I have my like tricks, t- like mental yeah. tricks. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So my favorite mental trick. I don't know where I learned this. I learned this a gazillion years ago. Um, I count backwards. From a thousand, mm-hmm. like with my breath, mm-hmm. so it's like one one number for one breath. Yes. And by the time you get to like nine hundred and eighty, you're like nine hundred and eighty-seven, nine hundred and seventy. No, nine hundred. No. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like you lose track of the numbers. Yeah. And then if it's because it's in the old days, sure they would focus. just count sheep. Yeah, that didn't work though. What do you say, Canada? <laughs> What's your record? Oh, that's a good question. That is a good question. <laughs> I I had I had a bout of really not being able to sleep once, and I got to like seven hundred and fifty. No, ma'am. And I was like literally laying in bed like <laughs> no. seven hundred and forty nine, seven hundred and forty eight. It was awful. I feel like by the time I'm at nine fifty, <laughs> I'm so angry and stressed out at the entire thing because it hasn't worked by nine eighty four <laughs> or whatever the heck. It's like when they have you ever been put out for like a, a, a yes. whatever they call it uh, uh, for a surgery uh, anesthesia yeah, yeah anesthesia <laughs> put it's, out it's messed with my long term memory unfortunately yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to take a nap <laughs> uh, I, I they tell you to count back from like a hundred or a thousand or whatever yeah. and it's like 99 <laughs> I love it it works so well for me uh, well I think it's the breathing too because the breathing it is. always it's helps the focusing, me if I, fo- if I can't sleep it I occupies five channels my focus thing. What I, are your I'm, five channels? I, Why do you have five channels? I don't know. I'm making that up. I just pulled that number out of it. But it's the idea You've that You've used like, it a lot. It's that idea that like there's I have to have multiple things going on in order to like focus. So Is it that or so that you personally feel productive so you personally Bogey can go on with her day feeling like, All right, I'm contributing and I'm doing this and I'm getting all my no, shit. No, I think it's a function I, I'm I'm really learning this about myself. I think this is how I function and there's like you can when you find out something about yourself, you can either try to change it or you can try to like work with it and make make it it work for you and i if like i know that i have to have multiple things going on and that i function better when there's multiple things going on so if i can fill those multiple things with things that are not too distracting then i can actually focus and so the sleeping thing it's counting it's breathing Mm -hmm. it's focus like Mm -hmm. it's all of these things i see Maybe you're right. Maybe I wasn't looking at all of the different facets. <laughs> Maybe when I think about counting my breaths, or I don't count my breaths, I just do the breathing. But you know what? That's not true. I do count. I count during the breaths because if I'm trying to fall asleep, I'll yeah. do that thing where you you breathe in for three to five seconds or whatever, then hold your breath for three to five seconds, then breathe out for like six to nine. It doesn't. I don't think there's a. Basically, it's Wim Hof breathing, but like at, okay. at nighttime. You I don't know. I don't. I have no idea. I was right. freezing. Are you leaving? I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm out of here. <laughs> have a good one. Nice talking to you. <laughs> no, <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> no, I was. We try to put the AC on because of all the stuff, and then. Yeah, you know, no, I'm just. I'm. It'll probably be very cold in a minute. Okay. Sorry. Then you'll just see me take it off and put it on and take it off again. He's used to it. Producer Mike, uh, we've got a great guest here. Do you have anything for her? Oh, well, yeah. Like, I mean, there's so, uh, so many things. I too love the, uh, the idea, the word I would use, Jay, provocative is a good word. I love the word eccentric. Like when you see somebody mm. do something completely off the rails with a vehicle, like, I'm, okay, I've got a small one that I'm doing. Um, I'm buying a brand new Bronco. It's going to be here soon. My dad had a scout uh, that for like 25 years of my life, that was the I vehicle of scouts. the house. And so I'm doing a bunch of things to make it look like a scout, including I'm not going to put the, the the written script of Bronco on the side of mine. I'm putting scout on mine and I'm putting a couple international symbols and things okay. like that. Wow. You're so I love what you're talking awesome. about. I love it. Yeah. 
I, like I would love to hear some more examples of things that you've seen over the years that you've even worked on yourself or that you've seen and are like, oh, I wish I worked on that. I would love to hear more examples of that. Oh my goodness. And eccentric's a good word. Feeling eccentric, goofy earlier. You yeah, eccentric is a good word. I, I Before we dive into the other examples, it was funny. We were at a, a little like party thing my parents and I went to and somebody asked my dad what I did professionally and he didn't know that I was listening, but his answer was, She's a long story. Yo, oh, and I was like, that is probably like the best. I love. I actually love that. I'm like, that's. I'm a long story. Yeah, that's good. Um, I like that. It was kind of like eccentric, but like even better. Like she's a long story. I always say complicated. We're complicated. You know that I, yeah. that that, that uh, relationship thing gets complicated. That's not, but we are. But that's so much more fun. <laughs> okay. It is. Like, I'd rather be complicated than simple. Simple? Boring. <laughs> Please, God, don't let me be normal. Yeah, I agree. I don't want to be normal. I think a lot of us chase normal in an early age uh, because just that's what it looks like you're supposed to do. Um, I was afraid of normal when I was young. You were? Yeah. My, that's great. So my older sibling was the weirdo. Like, my older sibling was the character, the weirdo, had all the complexity, and I was really well-adjusted, and I did well in school, and I had friends, and I danced, and I, I, I was, like, normal, and I felt so boring. Like, I felt so uninteresting in comparison to her. I was terrified of being normal. It's weird. I know. So you didn't see American Beauty, probably. Although that one, I did Oscar, actually. Maybe, yeah, you might have. It's big I enough. Did. There was something about you know. There's the girl who's a uh, Manny Savari from American Pie. She's like, uh, you know, the, I'm the model and an actress, and yeah. she's so interesting the whole time. And the the dig that cuts her at the end is when the the, the weirdo from next door who lights the fire uh -huh. was in love with the girl. <laughs> Am I the best synopsis guy? I love it. Was, that was perfect. Uh, uh, you did he a good goes, job. You are so totally ordinary. Yeah. And she's like. <sighs> So cut right, her, there's cut, cut her deep. I think it's an old Broadway show that my mom introduced me to, where there's the phrase of the character is "Please God, don't let me be normal." And like I totally grew up with that. Like, please, I don't, I don't want to be normal. That's kind of awesome, though, if it gave you the freedom. I don't know. A lot of people are afraid to be different. I, when it's you have a really weird older sibling, it totally. Ruins What's the deal with this older that? sibling? What's going on here? <laughs> you keep saying that, boy, girl. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Is it complicated? It's complicated. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> and you're the long story. I I know, right? I yes. Um. <laughs> so so I don't I don't talk about her often, uh, just because the the. The world isn't always as friendly as it could be, should be. Um, so first, first of all, she died um, oh. uh, when I was twenty. Oh, for fuck's um, sake! You could have opened with that. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm the asshole. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. It's I was twenty. It was twenty five years ago, right? It was, I'm I'm good. Um, I mean, obviously, I miss her, but I'm good. Um, so she was my older sibling. Uh, she was born my brother. Josh became my sister, Jenny. Um, she was a mad genius, like super smart, ahead of her time, like just. Like Mensa smart, um, and just really a unique. Um, so she uh, was into computers and oh. and that kind of stuff. She actually developed a, a software or a program that would allow a three dimensional visualization of medical data. So you could take a Jesus. brain scan and like slice it. And she tried to sell it to like the hospitals and whatnot. And nobody saw the value of it. And then like five years after she died, like they all have exactly the that. entire system works that it's, way. It's now. exactly what she wow. was selling. Yeah, she was just she was too smart for her own good. Um, but yeah, so it's like the genius. lady that made the internet in the sixties, right? Le had Lena Hadley or whatever. Oh, I don't know. Oh. Is it like a hidden figures type of thing? I know. There's I need another to look story into this and the yeah. ladies are behind. There always it? is. It's yeah. another documentary on Netflix. Mm. Okay. Of like. She was just hot, so no one. <laughs> so no one listened to her, oh. right? Right? Yeah, and they after she died, they found all the internet. Interesting. Now that she's not hot anymore. She's smart too. Now she's now she can smart. Yeah, because you can't be hot and lot. smart. <laughs> nope. No. No. Radia Perlman. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. So I've, I've completely avoided your question. Yeah. Did you notice that? Some other. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> that was my fault. I that was too white because you were. Yeah, that was my fault. I, that take, was a I, I take responsibility yeah. for that. Um, no, no, no I, mean, I apologize. I I assumed it was because you were um, letting the, the the mind work while you were telling other stories to think I about was. some of the. Uh, I totally okay, was, and go. I and it didn't come up with any answers. I don't. Um, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I don't have any good other examples. We were um, using all five things at once. I and know. She wasn't able to I then know. do. 
<laughs> I, I've let you down. I'm sorry. Um, not at all. And, not at all. Um, you've done some great sh- uh, builds on the show. And then, hang yeah. on, can we, let's back. Uh, <laughs> all right. We'll get to Mike's question in a second, but let me also. I don't know what's happening here. Am I all frozen out? This whole thing is, here we go. No, that's totally wrong. All right. We'll figure this out here. Um, the shows you've been on, I think, was it all Girls Garage that I first found you on? Bruh, but then you I had a you different, you've had so many different uh, shows. <laughs> and then what always really amazed and impressed me was that it seemed like you transcended all of the different versions of that channel there were. <laughs> we always watched you on the same channel, but like it had a lot of different names over the right, years. Right, so it was Velocity. No, before that it was, that, it was fucking something else. And, and yeah, so it did, I've been doing All Girls Garage since their first season, so that's, we're in our 12th year now. Is it still crazy. going? Yeah. No wonder. Yeah, next week I go film more episodes. Yeah. That's amazing. It's where crazy. are you doing it now? Florida. Oh, that's badass. Do you live in Florida? No, I live in Phoenix. Oh, okay. Yeah, I travel back and forth. Yeah. So where do you um, have to go in Florida? Not Miami. It's right outside of Tampa. Okay, that's, so. that's better. And then I was doing Garage Squad for <laughs> I'm sorry, a Miami. year. <laughs> Miami's rough. Yeah, it is a little. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm not. I'm not a huge Florida fan, but um. <laughs> my mother lives there, so we don't go yeah. very often. So I'm from New Jersey and New York area. I oh, okay. New York. Okay, sweet. Very nice. We're in Jersey. I we're I'm sorry. Along. We're never going to finish we're anything never on this show. Finish. You're going to have to come back. <laughs> Any thoughts? Um, I was born in <laughs> Queens. I grew up in North Jersey in Montclair. <laughs> yep. Know it all. Know it all. I'm we used to go to know thir- it all. 13A off the, the turnpike to go to Ikea. <laughs> <laughs> Before like, Connecticut had their own Ikea. You know how IKEA. it goes in like the Northeast, right? Florida is at least, okay, so I'm a, I'm a Jewish girl from New York and I'm like such like, I'm... Did you say I'm a such? Were you going to say I'm such a Jewish girl I'm from New York? Such, I'm a I'm like a typical New York liberal Jew. Like I'm like, <laughs> I'm like a New York Jew girl. Like not not in the like the Jewish American princess way, but like because no. we, we we didn't grow up religiously. It wasn't a like we weren't raised religiously. It was very secular, but like definitely culturally a New York Jew. And it, we are our own breed. Oh, yeah. New York Jewish women are like our own breed oh, yeah. of people. But how long for, were you in Queens before you? Um, be- I was only in Queens for like three years. Okay. And then I was in New Jersey, and then I lived in Brooklyn for a little while. Oh, wow. Um, But when you grow up in the Northeast, Florida is where old New York Jews go to die. Yep. Jerry Seinfeld's got the great joke. I sent two perfectly good 60 year old people down to whatever the heck later on there. Yeah. I My grandparents lived Whatever. in Century Village. In, it's uh, called Fort God's Lauderdale. Wedding Room. Yeah, God's I mean, it really room. it is. It's where it's where New York Jews go to die, and it's a horrible thing to say, but it's really true. But it's true. Um, <laughs> but it's true. You all have the money to have second homes, and Jews go down there the minute it gets too cold. Yeah, on the East Coast. Exactly. I, people are they're seeing a whole new side of me on this on this show That's by what the we way do. so people are either going to absolutely love me or I'm going to lose all of my fans tomorrow I'm not sure um. <laughs> <laughs> Well the good news is very few people actually watch this show so you, <laughs> so very very few things ever go viral <laughs> It'll be my luck. It'll be my luck that it's <laughs> yeah. like me sitting here talking about my sister and myself and like all of the stuff that nobody knows about me. And they're gonna be like, who? Strangely, that's why people Unfollow. Do... Nah, that's what that's the stuff people really do want to know. That's what they yeah. want to know. Yeah. Your car stuff means nothing if I there's agree. nothing behind it. So anyway, this does make sense as to why you weren't the uh, you weren't afraid to be not normal. Not normal. You were you. <laughs> <laughs> How to say this nicely? Help me here. No, help me here. I'm too too many double um, negatives. I'm a long story. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I w- I'm I'm not afraid to be different. Yeah. In fact, I saw it. I saw. I consider out. this a superpower. Is what I'm trying to say. I really, really do. Okay. As somebody who found it later in life, who was sort of, I don't know. You always trying to, I don't know, whatever. I didn't see through the bullshit until later in life. What I'm trying to say. I, I, feel I like really it's ebbed and flowed for appreciate me. Appreciate someone who got there earlier. I I appreciate that, and I'm gonna deflect because that's what I do. I'm not good at taking compliments. I like deflecting, but like, it's <coughs> in, in all honesty, like I feel like it's ebbed and flowed over my life. When I was younger. I was not afraid to be different at all. Like, and then somewhere, like I, I lost it. Mm. I think it was very early in my automotive career, honestly, where I was such a, I was such an outsider, and I was so different in so many ways that I just, 
I wanted to make the path as easy for myself as I could. And so I think I, I lost a lot of my, my personality and I got a little bit more scared of being different because I was so different. Like just walking into a space at a job, I was the first girl that ever worked anywhere that I worked. I was older than the kids that I went to school with. I was the girl. I was the Jewish girl. I was the New York Jewish girl who went oh, to a weird strikes. liberal God college. Like I was all of these things. <laughs> It was all of these things, and I didn't, I didn't, it was so hard enough, like it was hard enough that I wanted to make it easier by not being different. I wanted to be, and I lost, I think I lost my, um, my fearlessness a little bit with being different, and I feel like it's only more recently that I'm coming back into it. Mm. Because I think when women hit their 40s, our give a fuck gene starts to die. Oh, I love that. It's a thing. You know. You I used do. to have it, but it's don't a, anymore. It's a thing. Like, the give a fuck gene starts to die as you get older, and it's just like, this is just kind of who I am, if you like me, cool. If you don't, like, okay. But I think that's a healthy place to be, period. Like It I, is. I you're saying that's relatively new that for you? women don't get here until we're in our 40s, generally. Youth is wasted on the young. It feels like it's a combination of the earlier thing, though. Yeah, it's a, it's a pendulum swing. It's an ebb and flow. Like, I lost it for a little bit. Um, I used to joke that, like, in the, my early couple of years of working at the dealership, like, I, I learned how to bite my my tongue so well that I forgot how to speak. <laughs> I make that same joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Like, I, I just, I had to bite my tongue so much and hold back who I was. I felt I had to, at mm-hmm, least. Mm-hmm. Whether I actually did or not, I'm not sure. Um, it was definitely less of a friendly industry then than it is now to women, and it's still not where it should be, but it's getting better. Do you think the industry's but, changed, or do you think that your climb in it has changed how you're treated? Does that make any sense? Did I ask that right? Um, do you think that do you do you actually think that the? Uh, I think the industry is starting to change. Okay. I think it has not changed, duh, but it is changing. <laughs> okay, good right? answer. Right, like it is happening. We are seeing a shift in things, but like. You know, I do the podcast. I interview trades, trades women, and like I'm hearing more stories where women um, have had positive experiences coming up, but I still hear far too many of the same stuff that I went through 25 years ago mm-hmm. that they're mm-hmm. going through now. And so it's still it, we're we're changing, but we have not changed. Yeah, it's a process. Yeah. Yeah. So, and yes, obviously, like the, my relationship with the industry and how the industry treats me has changed as I've established myself and gained respect and you know been around for I kinda long wanted, enough. I just wanted to acknowledge that you also have earned some of that. The industry may have you. changed, but also you've earned how people would treat you differently over time. I appreciate. I appreciate that. I, I, I'm not saying it should be that way. People should be nice all the time. Right. I mean, what a concept. <laughs> it right. Work like that we way, should yeah. just like give people the benefit of the doubt right from the get go. What a concept. <sighs> Yeah, every time I try that, though, you get bit, too. I mean, there's no right way to do it, is yeah. there? Everything's a struggle. But sometimes you just got to, like, you, you take the, the risk of getting bit once in a while. Verna, for the benefit. For the, yeah, that's, you're right the positives that. that come when you give people the benefit of the doubt. Well, you have to be well. It's kind of like uh, any successory thing. Like, you got to be willing to go out there and, go, what is that? What do they say? Go to the, not the point of no return. When do they, <laughs> what do you? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you're trying the to say. The great unknown. Here. The great unknown. Okay. It's similar to me. You have to be willing to uh, not know what's there and still be willing to step, right, take ha- the leap. Like of you faith. have to be okay with being. That's the thing of being vulnerable, right? Yeah, like that, vulnerability is scary. What is this normal you speak of? Says Darren M. Cox. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I don't think I would know normal if it kicked me in kicked me in the butt. How? how Hit did, me in the butt. What's that phrase? I don't know. How or why are you even into cars? Did we skip that? We I totally like, skipped that. I, I like, yeah, we. Because we, you're like, so into cars. This, this is, is like what the your best is. interview ever. Because we have not talked about any of the normal stuff that gets talked about in interviews. I'm sorry. So I like totally <laughs> love this. No, this is awesome. Like we have the same kind. Nothing of brain. about this show is actually no, professional. Because all of for our the brains setup. are like, wee. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh. Turn on the bubbles. <laughs> Trying to focus on something. I know. Good point. I think I need to fill the bubble bubbles? machine. That's a good idea. You got bubbles? Yeah, there's a bubble machine. Oh. You guys talk. I'll see you later. That's really fun. Yeah. Okay, what was the question? How did I get into cars? Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, you did that. I'll just All right. stand behind you and fill the bubble And fill machine. bubbles. I like this. This is good. All right, we're going to have bubbles. We're going to have story time. How did I get into cars? Um, So I was I, I was I did not grow up around cars, like, at all. Um, my mom still doesn't even pump her own gas. Like, <laughs> I, my dad likes cars. But we, we wasn't like we didn't 
I didn't grow up with him working on cars, right? Like we weren't car people. I didn't grow up in a community. I grew up in Queens and North Jersey and it wasn't like a classic car community, right? Um, So, but I've always loved puzzles and I've always loved figuring things out. Um, and I was a little hippie kid. I was, when I was 16, I had dreadlocks. This is amazing. <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh my God. Yep. Sorry about Very that. Very refreshing too. This oh yeah. Good. This is good. That's an intense bubble machine. Oh, I turned it off. I kind of <laughs> I just need filled one it up. of these. That's amazing. Letterman used to have a bubble machine and we couldn't do this show without a bubble machine. Now, now I feel like I no, no show machine. shouldn't have a bubble machine. Everybody but should have one. I'm done now. I'm done. <laughs> um, okay, so my story. Focus. Focus. <laughs> All right. Um, so I was a little hippie kid. I was 16. I had dreadlocks. I went to like, you know, gathering of the vibes kind of music festivals and stuff like that. And um, and I loved Volkswagen bugs. Like they were my thing. Did you go to Woodstock 94? Were you there? I did not. Right, me neither. No, I did not. Okay. Did you go to Lilith Fair? I, I've not been to, I never went oh. to Lilith, no. I know, I kind of wanted good. to. I'm sure lesbians have a better time. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everybody always assumed I was a lesbian, so. Same, I, yeah. but <laughs> it was, it's Because you work music. on cars? Yeah, in college, my friends called me a closet heterosexual. Oh, you're faking it just to fit in. Try yeah, I mean, well, like all of my all of my friends were most of my friends were gay. I was in the women's studies program at Oberlin. Like I, like it just. You're, I, don't, um, I don't know. I was like a gay rights activist when I was in high school, and like everybody just assumed, like, well, if you're for gay rights, then you must be gay. And like you know, I can maybe I just support people. Like I could be for civil rights and not secretly be black. I can be for gay rights and not secretly be gay. Like it's I can support human beings. Nice argument. Right. Mm-hmm. Solid. Um, so I was, I was like really into that. So everybody like thought that I, I, my parents, I think, were waiting for me to come out, and I, I never did. My sister did. Your parents probably um, <laughs> were based on what you told us before. What's that? I so say your parents probably were yeah. based on what you told us yeah. before. Every- You're going, well, her personality chart says blah blah blah, but she hasn't right. acknowledged it yet. Uh, yeah, yeah. Everybody, everybody just assumed I was. Gay. And then I became a mechanic, and then I cut my hair short. My hair was like your length. And oh, then, and God. I rode a motorcycle. Oh, and I wore combat bit. boots and wife beaters and like carrying yeah, your helmet I, like, into the interview. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> and I was not I like and I'm like, I don't know why people think I'm gay. <laughs> like, whatever, that's just who I am. But yeah, my college friends called me the closet heterosexual. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. How did we get on this? I don't know. Um, so it was a hippie. Oh, love oh, Volkswagens. Cars, yeah. yeah, we are very easily distracted, all of us. This is dangerous. When you walked in, I gave you such a big hug because I'm so happy to meet you. I don't know. I was just, I was really looking forward to this. I feel like that just hasn't worn off. It hasn't. And this will be a very difficult show for other people to watch, but I've really enjoyed it. I'm hell sorry, out of it. guys. I've really enjoyed it. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Anybody who doesn't have our kind of brain that's like zing, 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 you're probably not following most of this. So I apologize in advance, but I appreciate you hanging in anyway. I'm guessing this is kind of fun for you because it's sort of your old life. Yeah. Like she used to be, I mean, she could, like you, keep five different fucking things ding, going ding, ding, on. Ding, ding, yeah, ding. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had to be prepared for anyone to call at any time with yes. any crisis. Yes. And, and know how gears. to fix it. Yes. And like top tier people. That's awesome. No, I mean like <laughs> she did crisis management and, and celebrity PR for oh, like wow. top tier talent. So like I'm going to just drop a name because he was always in the news. Whenever Tracy Morgan would say fucking fuck shit up, <laughs> guess who would have to go deal with it? Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> On a plane. Or anybody <laughs> like that. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot, but I feel you. It is. It's that ability to like shift gears really quickly, and like no matter what's going on, like go into solution mode, right? And you're it's fine no matter solid. what. Like no matter what, yeah. we're not painted in a quarter here. I guarantee it. Right. Just watch this. Yeah. <laughs> I'll come up with something. <laughs> my 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 staff used to make fun of my crew at my old dealer, my old um, shop that I had. They would make fun of me because I could be like in the middle of an emotional breakdown, like devastated, stressed out, crying. I could be like just totally like in it and the phone would ring and I'd be like, <laughs> thank you for calling 180 Auto. How can I help you? Oh, God. <laughs> I was crying before a show one time and a guy I knew, Rob, was Rob like- Rob Cordry? Yeah. I'm not going <laughs> to cry. I can't get ready in time to go on the air. And I was like, okie doke. Got it. <laughs> Got it. Let's go. I'm good. Love you. See you later. Shout out to Rob Cordry, by the way, who was on Adam Carolla's podcast today. And we should have him back here because he's. I love him so much. 
I don't know why I'm telling you. But I don't know. He's one of her old clients, too. Oh, cool. <laughs> I reached out to Craig and the other three guys. Oh, today. awesome. Craig is on his way to uh, London with the Nasty Delicious. I, I go to London. That. I miss London. Go to London. I have family there. I need to. What? Yeah. I know. It's actually funny. Like, literally three days ago, I was checking flights to London just on a whim. All right. So it's funny that you bring that up. Anyway. Well, no, it's not just him. So, There's a bunch of other people going, too. Oh, the is there like time. a thing happening? I don't know, but oh, it happens, I just just go happens to be, like Reggie Watts <laughs> was supposed to be here tonight, and he ended up, he's flying out to London today. He's well, playing separately. the O2. He's doing the O2, and then the other guys are doing Just for Laughs and something else. Reggie. Reggie, that's the name of the athlete that I didn't know. Oh, is there's a Reggie? Yeah, Reggie, there's a Reggie couple. Miller? There's Somebody. Reggie Jackson, who is baseball. Let's see if I can do this, folks. And then there's Reggie, who's a basketball player, who's really skinny. Help me, buddy. Reggie, Reggie Miller. Miller, yeah. Okay, I think it was the first one you said. Reggie Jackson. I think so, yeah. Yeah, from like the 80s. And, I, yeah, yeah, I was so bad. When I was, I was so a kid, he was one of the I'm biggest. I'm so embarrassed. He was one of the biggest. Felt... Basketball, right, Mike? Wasn't he the guy in basketball? Ba- basketball? He was in basketball, yes. Is that how you pronounce he it? He hit lots of triple plays. No, there's, a, it's there's a another. It's different. <laughs> there's, there's, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just waiting. My unfollow count is just like going crazy right now. And he's like, delete, delete, delete. Oh, this is so. Oh good. my god. Oh. So there's basketball and basketball, and then there's this movie where they create they create a new sport oh, where it's geez. a combination of the two. Okay. You are hilarious. <laughs> you're my favorite. You please stop, come here every time you're in town. Just make okay. it a plan every Tuesday and Thursday. <laughs> we're here. Just make make sure you're here. Oh, oh. this is amazing. Oh my god. Um. So so yeah. Them? To finish answering your question, Volkswagen bugs is why I got into cars. That's the, is your answer done? Okay. <laughs> it's a very short story. It's a really long story, <laughs> but it's a really short story. <laughs> I'm sweating now. You're right. It got warm in here. It did. It got warm in here. It did. I, I think it's happened. all the laughing. Oh, um. Your energy is so good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Oh, correct. So, so Volkswagen, Volkswagen bugs got me into cars. Um, I didn't. Like, I just wanted to own one, though. I didn't want to like work on them. I had no interest in that until. I discovered how women mostly show up in the automotive industry, and I learned that from reading Volkswagen magazines in the early 90s, mm. where the only time women showed up was in high heels and bikinis. And I... Just sit on the hood and take the Yeah, with and... strategically placed grease marks, of course, too, right? And so that <laughs> oh, was no. like... Like, so that my little 16-year-old brain, I was like, this is so not okay. Like, I'm going to build my own bug, and then I'm going to have it in the magazine, and I'm going to have a hot dude pose in front of it. And that never happened, sadly. Huh? But who would buy it? I, I mean, I would. Um, I, <laughs> I did. Rest- I did restore my bug, but I did not get in one of the magazines. But I did restore it, and then I fell in love with it. Like I went off to college because that's what I was supposed to do, and like the four year college. That's like, you know, it was. It wasn't a question of if you were going to go to college. It was what college. Like Where'd that you was go? the assumption. I went to Oberlin. Oberlin, in Ohio. That's a gay school. <laughs> <laughs> Closet heterosexual, yeah. Well, that, no wonder they um, all call. Well, that means they I know. Barely and I, on that and I was a women's studies major, and I lived in the all women's I dorm. Mean, <laughs> I know, I know. She's like, "What are you doing with all this dick?" What I was just like a, I was just like a political, like I was just really into. The but things. were you like dating guys and stuff, and you were yeah. like, bring, so they're, they're well, like, what not, is she doing? She's trying to. I know it's all very confusing. <laughs> It's all very confusing. <laughs> no, but I understand. It looks like you're trying to put on a, a thing, like a ruse. Right, but it wasn't. It was just who I was. Like of I was course. really into women's issues. I was really into like women's empowerment, and I, love it. I loved Ani DeFranco. <laughs> and I really you liked riding a motorcycle, party. and I, but I really like dudes. And you know, for a while, I, like it bothered me. <laughs> like I almost wish I didn't. Like because it would be easier. It would be easier. Everybody yeah. assumes I'm a lesbian. Yep. It would be so much easier if I actually were. Until I married but I'm her. I'm not. Everyone thought I was gay, and I got, I got right. Literally from when I was a, like a kid working on the Rosie O'Donnell show in New York City. Like remember when she had a and talk show when yeah. we were kids? And they I was assumed you were gay. It. They, the old time crew guys, literally told me that Rosie's only nice to me because she, <laughs> she thinks I'm gay, oh, and how they knew I wasn't. Funny. And they're like, I know. And it was a whole thing. And these guys, you know, it's the old gruff guy. They're still smoking yeah. in between and everything, you know. 
Um, but anyway, and so my whole life after that, just for years and years and years, and then I got it's, married her, and then obviously it all right. went away. But yeah, see, that's why I, just I get, got I pulled to get aside so many times by people telling me that you were gay. You know, he's gay, that, right? That he was gay. Yeah, I, <laughs> oh yeah. She's not the first girl. I mean, that that was a thing. They would always we tell me we were engaged. That. I had a ring, like. That's amazing. And people still pull me aside so, surreptitiously to be like, you know, right? But people also, you said people thought you were a lesbian, right? When I was So, like, did they think that you guys were covers for each other? Ooh, we're bearding each other. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, maybe we still are. What a great idea. Never occurred to me. I would love to have it, it, this is what resonated with me when you said oh for a while there I kind of wished I was I had that thought I never wished I was gay but I thought to myself boy this would be a lot easier and not as long a story right I would align better with what people think I if I just were yeah but, but I'm uh, yeah. but I'm not <laughs> I but tried I, six I or eight times and I made that. sure <laughs> six, or six or eight yeah. <laughs> I, I consider myself trisexual yeah I'll try anything oh. once if I like it I'll do it again there you go <laughs> Trisexual. I've never heard that. That's an old Depeche Mode quote. Depeche like, Mode? Depeche Mode. Did you just say Depeche Mode? Depe- yeah, Depeche I Mode. Heard it. Depeche-, Depeche Mode. Depeche <laughs> Mode. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. Leave me alone. <laughs> oh, Mike, save the day here, buddy. We are off the rails. <laughs> No. We are off the rails. This is getting ridiculous. I'm going to go put the air conditioning on. You guys chat <laughs> And I up swear we're not drinking and we're not doing drugs. Like this is just um, this is just energy. <laughs> All right. Well, I have a couple notes. I do have a couple notes here. Do you uh, have some like one, legitimate questions type- for us? No, 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 they're not legitimate at all. The type of uh, the type of gal that you were you were referring to, the type of uh, uh, Jewish female from where you are, I think that's referred to as the middler. The the I'm pretty sure that's what they call a. No girl one here like says that. Move on. I've not heard that. <laughs> no, He's I just Canadian. made it up. Oh. Um, but it's pretty funny because I like Bette Midler. I think she's pretty rad. And oh. what you're describing kind of oh, has it. some of that sassiness. Oh, I thought I that. get Move it. On. Yeah, <laughs> she's um, older now. Yes. <laughs> uh, down in the states nicole played hockey of course people are going to think she's a lesbian up here in canada of course they just think that she's marrying material for that um, uh, right perspective is everything isn't it right? oh perspective is everything uh when i was growing up the girl who played hockey because hockey women's hockey was obviously further along up here as gen xers than it was maybe down there but like yeah, no, no. You you were considered a goddess if you played hockey up here. That's so uh, funny. So that 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 was there. There was that. Um, the other thing that I was going to say, um, I love what you're talking about. I think Gen X many times gets a bad rap because back in the day, the the, the time that you were growing up, you know, the idea of being a gay rights activist, right? And Gen X really, in a lot of ways, took that on the chin. A lot of our friends, brothers, sisters, whatever, the closeted folk are the the ones who are really, really brave. And there are a lot of us around them who tried to support them. A lot of us around them who had our minds transformed that uh, more so than the baby boomers did. And, and now, and I think it's so funny that now we're in our 40s. And the generation that came after us that we all thought, hey, yeah, we're doing good things. You know, we're, we're doing great things. They all want to cancel us for other stuff. And it's so right. funny how the generation that comes along always hates the generation that preceded them. And I just right. think that's pretty Well, it's like too, the so. envelope keeps getting pushed further, right? As as it yeah. should, right? But like, you know, it's perspective is everything. When, when my sister came out, like there wasn't language. Like people didn't know the word trans. Right. Like that wasn't, like there wasn't, language around it it's a different world now like if she were alive today and coming out today like totally different game because the world has shifted the world has changed but back then you know it was i don't know how you did it i had to explain gay people to straight people that i knew they were older i was like just a friend all yeah. good. Yeah. And they just did. a friend all good. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't Stop get worrying. It. Yeah. No one got it. No. Cuz but it was it was different then. There it, it, things have changed for the better, right? Like I think, you know, things start to to shift, our perceptions start to change. Like I think about, you know, obviously we have a ton of way to go still when it comes to accepting people just as human beings regardless of any of the boxes that we tend to like to put people into because mm-hmm. we have the penchant as americans and as just as people human beings in general we like to put everything in a little box so that we can know what what it is right Ugh. and and when we so get out how, but of it that translates to, so they know how they feel so about they know it. how they feel about it right so that we can judge it and i get it like to a degree some of that comes from like you know 
our our history as animals. We had to know friend or foe at an instant. You know, do you run or do you stay? The the thing that differentiates us from our ancestors from a gazillion years ago is that we can think and override our right whatever's with Fight intelligence and when we can actually like get to a place where we don't have to put people in boxes and just accept people for mm. what they are and we're getting closer like we're getting better i think about like change never happens as fast as we want it to it was really not that long ago that slavery was legal that women didn't have the right to vote That's that we couldn't own our own credit cards or yeah. own our own money that we were considered less than full people right and so the fact that our parents remember separate water fountains and stuff like yeah, that to me is a ex- big deal exactly like there are people like, alive today that still remember segregation experienced yeah. it and so yeah we have a long way to go but things have shifted a lot. And I do think like each generation is going to think that the generation before was like so outdated because, you know, in comparison, we, we are, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> well, it's fine. You, but you used the, the, the term uh, she was so ahead of her time when you described yeah. your sister before. And that was creatively. But it sounds like also maybe socially as well. I mean, it, I think, you know, yeah. there was no transparent or any of that stuff back then. Like you're saying, right. it was there wasn't even a social conversation about it. Yeah. And nowadays, I think like, well, which season of Transparent was she like? Which character on Transparent was she like? You is know what I mean? There was there's been so much more exposure. A TV show? Oh, sorry. It's a, yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, it's about a trans. I'm like, is that a support group? It's about a trans. <laughs> Because there was a group called Trans Family in, in, in Ohio that I was part of. It was like family members of trans folks. And you're like, transparent. I'm like, oh, that Sorry. sounds like Trans Family. Okay, yeah. cool. I forgot the audience here. But yes, <laughs> it's like three or four seasons and it's very, very good. It's very emotional. And they, the, 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 the people who created the show, Silloway, I can't remember her name. She, she uh, uh, her, the same thing, her family, I think it was a sibling as well who uh, was trans and whatever. This, the show was basically a tribute to the whole Interesting. thing. Interesting. Okay, I'll have to check it out. It's worth it. It's Amazon Prime awesome. if you have that. I do. Uh, and, the, and it's very, very good. But my point uh, was that, that it, just, it was not exposed. It was not being talked about. If it yeah. was, it was probably rather taboo. Yeah. Yeah. No, 100%. People, didn't, they didn't understand. They didn't have language. I didn't understand it. If you watch the show, the older generations really don't know, and they show how that works. Yeah. And how to communicate, you know. Interesting. Because it's it's a several seasons. Okay, I'm totally going to watch it. It's several seasons, so you get to see how, you know, people's, there's arcs to how people feel about it. Yeah. It's interesting. And very interesting. And and for everybody at home, we've talked very little about cars. I'm sorry. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. (laughs) You didn't know what you were signing on for when you tuned into this, did you? So All Girls Garage is still going. Season 12 is coming up. 12 or 13? 12. Uh, we are filming 12 right now. Okay. Yeah. Next week in Miami. Yes. <laughs> okay. In Tampa. In Tampa. Tampa. Uh, uh, but w- you have had other shows, and then you're just kind of like, you always pop up on other people's shows, too. Oh, geez. A little bit. I've done a little bit. So I did Garage Squad for a year, um, and then I did, I was a guest on... Um, uh, 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 what was it called? Garage Rehab? That's the one I was actually thinking the, of where you um, show up at somebody else's place and then they redo their, their, their joint. Yeah, or their, so their Garage car Squad in their joint. was rebuilding their car at their house, but then there was, um, <laughs> in like there a was weekend. Garage Rehab um, with Richard Rollins who was going into shops I didn't and, see that one. and rehabbing the shops. Got it. Which it was like right up my alley because I am a shop management coach and I do a lot of that with shops Seriously? and helping the, yeah. God, you're so I do, I do, I do a lot of like working with independent shop owners, and and now starting to work with manufacturers and dealerships a little bit Are as you well. A consultant? Like, yeah. Oh, that's great. I am. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. You're one of the bobs. The bobs. Oh, you don't get that reference either. I, I don't get that reference. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, compared to my ex boyfriend, you're not that funny. <laughs> <laughs> And for anybody not watching since the beginning, that didn't make any <laughs> sense <laughs> whatsoever. But I think probably most of this conversation really hasn't made any sense really to anybody. That you got it. Except for it I, got, I got you. I got you. <laughs> Our people know that we're not. Right? Scrooge. We're not linear in our thought processes. And we're just not professional. Like, this isn't good. If we thought this through, there would be blue cards with it. And then tell me about when you were 16 and the thing right. happened. And I want to hear that story. And it I wouldn't interrupt. It looks so professional, though. I'm so impressed with how professional this looks. I used to work on real shows, and I know how they did it. So I, I have that unique knowledge that we apply here, I obviously. I love it. I'm going to be picking your brain after all of this and help 
Do you know anything? I mean, I don't want to make this about me, but I know so much about you. Yeah, Do I know, you know nothing. anything about him. I know nothing other than what I've like seen in Before other this nonsense. interviews like this, which also are very nonlinear and don't tell me a whole heck of a lot about you. So no. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, like you and your whatever. A uh, last minute, I'll send you a bunch of links to you can watch on the show. Now, awesome. that, now that it's totally over. Awesome, um, I love it. <laughs> you, 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 you're gonna come back because we should finish a conversation. We someday. should finish at least one conversation. I'll make. I'll watch this back. I'll make notes. <laughs> I'll see w- what ended where and what we need to pick up again. I don't have the fucking brain power to do that. Sounds like a good idea, though. <laughs> this may be like the my favorite interview that I've ever had. This is awesome. We get that a lot, but I don't know. I don't know if it's actually true. I feel like people don't know what to say, no. so they say something nice. No, I love it because this is like one hundred percent. Like your brains are like the same as my brain. Wee bubbles. Yeah, squirrel. Squirrel. Shiny. <laughs> my name is Doug. Oh, you don't get that one either, probably. No. God damn it. <laughs> so that's the problem with our generation. And Mike was bringing this up before. We all. We communicate in Seinfeld quotes and yeah. uh, and movie references I know, and, I'm and such a Anchorman bad New York things. Jew because I didn't watch Seinfeld. Such a bad You're New York worst. Jew. I am. I'm bad. I came in in the I'm last really few bad seasons. Jew in general. Like, it, wasn't it so popular and normal though that you were like, ah, that's not my frequency? Yeah, that's what I was. It was too. just like I knew those were. I knew those people. <laughs> like, <laughs> but I've always said like I'm I'm Jewish. <laughs> With the uh, emphasis uh, on the ish. That's nice. <laughs> you also use ish a lot. I do use ish a lot. Yeah. Sometimes I use it for like ish, and then sometimes I use it for like like getting my shit together, ish together, because mm-hmm. it's the PG version of shit. Yeah, all it's out ish. of whack. Yeah. It's been jumbled. Just the ish. Yeah. <laughs> it makes sense in my mind. Is there anything that we should cover? <laughs> Like from a professional or promotional standpoint, obviously, All Girls Garage season twelve yes. will be airing soon. You're going to go start shooting it very yes. soon, uh, so um, look out for that. How do we people follow you? So you can follow me on Instagram and on Facebook and on YouTube. Although I'm not very strong on YouTube, um, at Boogie's Garage, and then my shop is Girl Gang Garage. So you can follow Girl Gang Garage as well. And then there's a new YouTube channel and a new website and a new everything for With Her Two Hands. Uh-huh. Um, and y'all be real patient with me because I don't know what I'm doing. And it's a lot of work to get all of this stuff converted over. So like, it's not going to be very good at first. Isn't that like quality level? Like the the podcast and the interviews, like that's all going to be good. But like the graphics. Might not be as good, and like the transitions, and I'm gonna be learning StreamYard and like all isn't of these when, things. So be gentle when, with me. Isn't that when your show is the best? Isn't when you're when you're trying things and you're figuring it out, yeah. and you're not quite there, and you're I using so. all the things. I think that that's when it's a little I'm, better. I'm hoping so. I just I put so much pressure on myself because I'm like I want I want all of the back episodes uploaded already with graphics and descriptions, and I want to know how to do the things, and I want to have the things and the stuff, and I want my website in place. And I want all of the stuff, and the reality is that is not going to happen because I have four days. <laughs> it's also too much. It's not going to happen. Um, but I know that I'm beating myself up, so be gentle with me. And, um, and tune in to With Her Two Hands. Yeah. Same great show, different name, different channel, different location. It'll be on YouTube Same. and then the podcast it's, platform. Yeah, so it's going to push to live stream every Wednesday night. Um, as it always, it's, so it's always on, it's been on Instagram, but it's always Wednesday, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, it'll stay live stream, but it'll push to YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn. So what you were doing and last night, that was it? It'll be, yeah. Oh, okay, because I watched some of that. I okay, checked yeah, out. Yeah, I, okay. I saw you poking. Nice. Po- poking? Popping? I, I don't know. Oh, popping. Jesus Christ, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're a closeted heterosexual. No, I said that. A little wrong. bit of column A, a little bit of column B. <laughs> <laughs> Everything hurts from laughing. I love this. This is amazing. Um, so yes, tune you in. Need a drink tune after in this. to that. A lot of people are like, "Can we go out to dinner after this? Let's go get some drinks. Hit the smokehouse." <laughs> I love it. Um, what else should people know? Check out um, Iron Maven. What's that? Um, that's the, the the Volvo build. Oh right, which we started to talk name. about, and then then we went no, off. I threw you on a tangent. Yeah, then we My went fault. on squirrel. I asked about the um, chassis and the. I'm really plug. good at going down rabbit holes. Um, uh, so yeah, check out the builds. Check uh, check me out online on Instagram, on social, on whatever, and uh, yeah, that's that's all I got really. And are watch you, All Girls Garage on Motor Trend. Are you really thinking about dumping Instagram? I'm not dumping Instagram. I still, uh, I will still be on Instagram. I just oh, okay. don't, I don't know how to go live on Instagram at the same time because I'm using what, what, 
well, we can talk business later. Like, wow. not business, but like technical stuff. Because mm-hmm. I'm going to be using StreamYard and they don't push, they can push live stream to all of the other things, but not to Instagram. Correct. Instagram, Instagram wants play you well. to use their thing individually. Yeah. Instagram knows that they but have Facebook and they can, want Instagram to be their right. thing. So that's and why you can it. do that because you have your guest here, but I'm always filming remotely. And so I can't do Instagram and the other thing at the same time because. Because you have one phone? Is that the problem? I have one phone. Right, but you can and buy another which, phone. What, or just buy a used But then iPhone. I also have to have my guest have two phones. Because my guest would have to have the one that's for the rest of the live Oh, I see your point. Of the live because stream. you're not face Because we're I not physically together. That's tough. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I don't know how to overcome that. So the only thing that I can think <laughs> is that I would upload. I, I build it. a lot of people's studios. If you want one of these, I could do it for you. <laughs> And it needs to be mobile so I can bring it with me when I'm traveling. Have you done the smoking tire? Excuse me, what? Yes. I actually have. I, Sorry. I'm it took me a second to realize what you were saying. I'm yes. going to go back and uh, watch that. I would like to see you on okay. that. Matt's a great friend. We love him. Um, I think the last time I was... I've Hands been up. on a couple of times. And the last time I was on, while we were recording, a bird commits suicide on <gasps> my glass back door. In the middle of the call, like we're doing like oh, a Zoom. Oh, you were Zoom. on the computer. Yeah, we were doing oh. like a Zoom thing and there was this loud thud and I'm like, like in the middle of an interview and I was like, I think a bird just killed itself on my door. Oh, God. And it had, like I literally, like a bird just flew into my glass door. I mean, anyway, this is the worst. Story. This is the worst. So this random. This is the worst ever. <laughs> <laughs> She's a long story. Her sister I'm is trans. She kills long birds. <laughs> I am a long story. See why my dad answered that way? I'm a long story. <laughs> Holy moly. Well, the good news is I feel like you're somebody we could be friends with. So I have a feeling this is the beginning Amen of a very that. beautiful friendship. Cheers. Um, cheers. <laughs> cheers to that for sure. Cheers. cheers. Um, and, uh, it's Rudy if you don't. <laughs> Sorry, I know I realized that. Uh, Adam Ferrara is at the Marconi uh, on April 1st. We'll be there with him as well. Check out uh, eventbrite.com slash Marconi for tickets and details. Uh, also, late night playset, fifth anniversary party, autoimmunity foundation fundraiser, and TV taping uh, happening at the Motoring Club on April 15th. So Saturday night, I believe. Uh, your only, your only, Mike, help me out here. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Your only source for official Late Show with David Letterman merchandise is the Hello Deli. I know you probably didn't used to watch Letterman, but there was a deli outside, and Rupert from the Hello Deli sponsors uh, this stuff here, and we wanted to say thank you to him. Get yourself uh, some of this dated and also now current again swag yourself by going to hello-deli.com and say hello to Rupert for Nicole, because sometimes... I cannot. That's right. (laughs) This is the most focused I've seen you since I've met you. That was incredible. That was very, that was like, you were very focused. That was good. Would you believe that out of all of this ridiculousness and how bad I am at it, I actually went to broadcasting school when I was a kid. I am an actual graduate of the Connecticut School of Broadcast. Is that ridiculous? It's amazing. I yeah, love right. it. It's That's ridiculous. awesome. Uh, oh, gosh, we don't need that. Where is the other thing? Here it is. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, also, dual shift. Uh, this isn't it. <laughs> dual shift GVBC merchandise. <laughs> I distracted him. Sorry, that's my fault. It's a nightmare. My fault. Right. I'll we'll own that one. We'll open the Maddie McQueen stuff next week on the show. We'll open the Maddie McQueen stuff next week. You know, you might know. Uh, you st- no? Okay. <laughs> Fine. Remember Steve McQueen? You've heard that name. Yeah. Okay. His uh, son, Chad McQueen. Oh, I've heard that. Yeah. He heard was that in, uh, in uh, he's a racer, but he also was in like uh, oh, yeah. the karate movie. I've heard karate some, Kids. I've heard some of this a little bit. <laughs> I've heard about it. I'm I'm the worst. I'm sorry. Please, nobody take offense. No, I just you, don't know anything. You're fine. I don't know what I'm doing. But anyway, GVBC <laughs> stuff is available at Dual Shift. Dual Shift. Say it again. Oh, no. I was just commenting. It's it's charming. Uh, it's Aww. something, but thank you. <laughs> I don't know if charming is what it is. It's something. <laughs> and also, uh, check out Byron Bauer's Spiritual N-Word on Hulu and uh, around L.A. He's at the Comedy Store most weekends. Uh, and that's what's going on. Let's see. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Holy crap. <laughs> There's a shit ton going on. We didn't even talk about any of this stuff. Mike, first of all, with you, who's on the Letterman podcast this week? Oh, uh, tomorrow morning, Nadine Henley, uh, one of the Hi-Ho Babes, who appeared on Late Show with David Letterman over 400 times, also two times on uh, Late Night with David Letterman. She uh, and I and uh, Don Giller go for like two and a half hours. It's a really, really cool conversation. One of the sweetest humans I've ever met. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, the Letterman podcast, everybody. Nice. Wow, super cool. 
Uh, every Friday morning, new episode drops. Uh, he's recorded some fantastic episodes with former crew members, producers, writers, awesome. stuff like that, like all the top tier people that these people inspired people like us. So to be able to get those, yeah. it's so neat to have those conversations. That's cool. I'll have to uh, check it out. Tomorrow, GVBC. The mountain's closed, everybody. The mountain is closed, closed, closed. Even I, I told you, I was like, oh, we'll probably be on the mountain Friday if you want it. You're like, I don't know. <laughs> then we got the blizzard of California yeah, 2023. Yeah, there's a crazy schizophrenic weather out here right now. Uh, it's closed. Everything is closed. Yeah. Not just GBBC and Newcomb. Everything up there is closed. Mm-hmm. Please don't go up there. Everybody needs time. The emergency workers at Caltrans, uh, our guys with the helicopter, were doing the, the military meals, whatever those are called, meals ready to eat, MREs, yeah. and they're loading up the the sheriff's helicopter to bring out to the, the houses that are out there oh, because geez. they've been out they're, yeah. they're out in five six feet of snow it's craziness. for a week and a half or whatever it's craziness i keep seeing pictures <laughs> of the mountain covered yeah. in feet of snow it's intense everyone saw that picture i posted uh the other day of newcomb's totally buried that was taken by tanner up at the uh at, at the uh, uh at the camp up there and he has been snowshoeing down seven miles in what is between five and eight feet deep <laughs> to go feed Karina's cats and do the, the nice little thing. Like oh, my goodness. Like doing errands down in Chileo. Oh. I read her, that on her Facebook. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this kid gets oh an A. Gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, holy crap. Dang. He's not a kid, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so anyway, tomorrow GVBC is not on the mountain, but, but, but our friends at Haggerty Garage and Social have offered to host us at the Culver City location. So that's where we're all right, going right. to be. Yeah, you got some friends over there too, I right? Do. Um, so that's where we'll be, the Culver City location. It's uh, you can look up the thing. It's Landmark <laughs> Landmark Avenue. This is again how you can look we are. it up. <laughs> if you want to join us, go to, <laughs> go on Instagram or look it up. Uh, Prove that you Haggerty really Garazin want it by doing the research yourself. There's, is that what it is? That's what <laughs> the real GVBC <laughs> is. You gotta you gotta get there on your own. Okay. There's no uh, there's no cell Put reception. In the effort. Got it. It's cool. It's cool. It's a deadly. Have you ever driven Angeles Crest or ridden a bike up there? I don't think so. Maybe. Oh, God, oh, it's a maybe. world-class driving road. Get back here. You should. <laughs> can't believe you're leaving. I want to hang out. I'll come uh, back, I promise. And then Saturday. Saturday morning is uh, Santa Clarita Cars and Coffee with the Purist Group. Uh, I will be up there. Maybe we, but definitely me. Uh, Saturday night. Saturday night is Trivia Night. Avance presents Trivia Night at Auto Conduct. And I will be hosting the Trivia Night over at Auto Conduct. Go to Auto Conduct to find out the details and time and address of that because I don't know it. Sunday, <laughs> Sunday morning. We Sunday, will be Sunday, in Mass- Sunday, 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 Sunday. Watch them shake hands with the devil as they race through the gates of hell. Sunday. Bigfoot, barefoot, grave digger. <laughs> Nassau Coliseum. <laughs> <laughs> We grew up with the same commercials. One hundred percent. Finally, I got a reference. Oh Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Uh, we'll be at the Cafe Del Plage in Malibu on Sunday to, to just chill the fuck out after this weekend. Just take it easy. It's been one hell of a week. Also, this is sad. This is sad, Uh-oh. but I do want to just. Um, uh, seems like there's a lot of loss going on, and um, Matt Farah um, uh, is a friend of ours. His wife. Hannah is a very good friend of ours. She, uh, it's hard to describe. Her. Mm. Matt's brother-in-law, Hannah's brother, um, passed away the other day. He's had a long battle with cancer, and uh, it's just a really sad thing. The Smoking Tire uh, family is uh, one less. Um, this guy was involved. <clears throat> he, um, he owns a company that makes this uh, acoustic uh, tile stuff, like, you know, for, for every mm-hmm. podcast studio. So we did the whole smoking tire studio in the stuff from his company. So we were working with him a lot. I just, we met him at the uh, housewarming thing, and I just want to say uh, so, so sorry. I'm and sorry. Sad end to, uh, yeah. to, to John Stein's fight for, uh, for cancer there. But on the other side, our good friend Tony Rackley lost his mom today. He flew out mm-hmm. to London to try to get there in time, and he did. Oh, no. He made it. He oh, made he did it. make it. He did make good. it. He made it. He was there with mom. Good. And his brother, but uh, but mom passed away today too. So in addition to all of the crazy loss, and everybody seems to be dealing with a lot of shit right now, like tensions are high. Mm-hmm. Just wanted to say, we love everybody, and we're we're thinking about you. So I love you, Bogey. We love you. You guys are great. <laughs> this is so much fun. Producer Mike up in Canada. We love you. We love everybody at home. Please love one another. And uh, that's it. You did it. I are did. we done? Woo! Woo! We did it. See you next week, everybody. <laughs> I love it. Great.
Great show, kids. That was a blast. Thank you, Mike. Love you.